It was the town at the real epicentre of the coronavirus outbreak in Italy, which then became, at least at first, the epicentre of the whole of Europe's Covid pandemic. The first cases detected in the first few weeks of February 2020 in the town of Codogno, before clusters emerged across the region of Lombardy. There were theories about where the virus came from, initially centred around people who'd visited China, but the identity of patient zero never confirmed. It wasn't long before the number of cases grew, followed by the number of deaths. Face masks became the norm, roadblocks put in place, schools closed and lockdowns imposed. Trains ceased to stop at Cognogno station and soon increased measures were put into place at regional airports. The whole of the wider area of Lombardy and neighbouring provinces soon locked down in their entirety. The shape of things to come for the rest of Europe and of course the shape for millions of others right across the world. I've wondered myself why there are so many cases in Italy, all of which are suddenly discovered. I confirmed that we have adopted a guideline of utmost care from the start. Among the Western countries, where health protection standards are higher, we are the country that has adopted the most rigorous and meticulous measures. Well, coronavirus has, of course, devastated the health, culture and economy of Italy. In all the Lombardy region, seeing Thousands of deaths amid millions of cases across the country. Now, though, finally, the vaccination campaign kicking into gear with falling case numbers, hospital admissions and daily deaths. So as the situation begins to look more optimistic, how is the pandemic threat still affecting the lives of those in Europe who knew it first? Well, Louise Malnoy, Lorenzo Penza and Natalia Mendoza revisit Codogno for France 24. His town has been deeply affected. Francesco Passerini is the mayor of Codogno, the European epicenter of the coronavirus epidemic. Coming here is still very emotional for me. One year after the first alert, he unveiled this monument dedicated to the town's victims. In March 2020, the death rate was five times higher than normal. We wanted to show the strength of a united community facing an unknown enemy that had killed our neighbours. It seemed impossible, so far from big ports or major cities. He'll never forget the evening of the 20th of February. At 11pm, he got a call from the police chief. He told me they'd identified the first case of coronavirus at the hospital in Codogno. <sighs> I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. That moment, a few seconds, was incredible. A thousand things cross your mind. Above all, you try and digest the information and take it on board. At seven in the morning, I summoned an emergency council meeting and I gave the order to confine our town. A radical decision and yet totally unheard of. He hoped this would avoid overwhelming the hospital and save as many lives as possible. This is the public hospital in Codogno, and it's here that the nightmare began. Dr. Laura Ricciavuti remembers it well. I found myself treating a young patient who was in perfect health three days earlier and whose condition got worse very quickly. When he arrived, we gave him two litres of oxygen and we took him to intensive care. We gave him 14 litres. Standard diagnostic procedures gave no answers. All the usual tests came back negative. There was only one possible cause left, the new Chinese virus. When the test results came back and they immediately called me, my reaction was, well, I was terrified and anxious. Anxious for the situation in general, I said to myself, that's it, it's got to Codogno, what are we going to do? But also anxious for myself directly because I'd been tending to patients and I was worried I contaminated my family. A new illness that they knew nothing about. Hospital admissions soared. Dr. Ricivuti was one of the first to get sick. She recovered and returned to work. She earned the National Medal of Merit for her dedication. 
I still find it difficult to believe. Even when I open the box, I'm extremely honoured. Today, COVID patients are restricted to closed areas. There are half as many patients today than there were a year ago. And the vaccination programme should ensure a continued decrease. Cristina Dragoni coordinates the distribution of doses. I'm from Codogno, and I remember the time when the town was deserted. We were frightened. The ambulances, the ambulance sirens are engraved in my memory. There were so many of them. We were scared we weren't going to make it. I just had a baby and I was worried that I wouldn't be around for my new daughter. And then I caught COVID and I was even more scared. And so today, to be able to be part of this vaccine experience, it's like seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. She has been inoculated, along with the majority of health workers, who are continually exposed to coronavirus. Is this your first dose? OK, so give me your left arm, please. In her zone, there are 240,000 inhabitants to vaccinate. One third has already received the first dose at the end of April. Hello, sorry to bother you. Hello. I'd like to know when I have the opportunity to get vaccinated. Well, how old are you? I was born in 1973. OK, then it's not possible just yet, but within a month or so, they should be vaccinating your age group. OK, okay thank you. Goodbye. Since February 2020, Antonio Fazio has lost all his bearings. It's true that we were the first, so I think that we probably got more scared than everybody else. The daily routine for Antonio, a translator from Belgium, has changed. Even just going shopping is different. We did that quickly. Before getting in the car, a quick squirt of disinfectant on the hands because I've touched things that everyone else has touched. And back home, he disinfects all his shopping. There's a risk of contamination on the surfaces. It's like I can see the marks with ultraviolet rays. You see, it's the same. I say to myself, perhaps you're exaggerating a little, but on the other hand, for the time being, there's no alternative. This invisible threat has made him hyper-anxious. Indeed, for the first time in his life, he's felt a need to see a psychologist. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hi, Antonio, how's it going? I'm doing well. This situation has taken away our reference points, everything that we were used to. These weekly conversations have finally allowed him to feel comfortable about going into a pharmacy again. It's small victories that become big victories. It's true that the pharmacy, for me, had turned into a COVID hotspot. And she said to me, go and you'll see. It's an invaluable help. Progress is made step by step. But there's a big step that the 48-year-old would like to make. I'd really like to get vaccinated as soon as possible so that I can go back to a normal life and freedom. Vaccination is also the objective for the mayor of Codogno, because locking down the entire town has had a disastrous effect on local finances. It's difficult to calculate on a local level, but for the whole of the red zone it costs more than 100 million euros in the first 15 days. It's monstrous. Today, he has to ensure that the town's services continue to function and he keeps digging into the town's financial reserves. For the police, the retirement homes, the commercial sector. In the space of one year, the town has had to go through three shutdowns and as many reopenings in waves. A situation that has put business owners in an untenable position, with the hospitality sector at the forefront. Hi there, Emmy. Can I have a coffee, please? Emiliano Brizzolari owns the cafe. Here, everything has changed. He has five employees. The beer and wine have arrived. And the green tea as well. He has had to resort to short-term contracts and have the staff take turns coming into work, half days at a time. Today, it's Nicoletta who is behind the bar. Here's your macchiato. We're only working a little bit, but luckily my boss has always given me a regular salary. I can manage because I live with my parents, but otherwise it would be a huge problem. Just enough to keep one's head out of the water, 
to survive. With only takeaway service available, the business is not making enough money. Either we reopen for good or we starve and we'll all end up at the soup kitchen. It's an untenable situation. But the cafe owner is still optimistic about a better future. The town's future is also playing out in the classroom. Hello, good morning, hello. Valentina Gambarini is the head teacher at Codogno Secondary School. After completely closing down for several months in 2020, pupils have been able to return gradually since September. Did it go smoothly? No. Why not? I have to continually monitor the situation with my colleagues to make sure that the students are following their new rules properly. But I have to say they're pretty sensible and it's rare to have to tick them off. They're mature and are aware of the responsibility they have. Flexible timetables, signs in the corridors, disinfectant dispensers. The head teacher has gone from running the education programme to managing the students' health. Is everything OK here? Yes, I'm just checking the students are lining up properly. OK, fine. Keep your distance, please. 25% of lessons are held online today. For several months, online classes were the only option for everyone. But this came at a price. Compared to last year, the percentage of student disengagement has doubled. These adolescents were shut up at home. Don't go and think that they took advantage to party. Most of these young ones have gone through a prolonged period of confinement. And this period of isolation has caused them to regress. It's provoked fear. It's changed family relationships. Julia, who's 18, and Clara, who's 19, have never been so happy to go to school. With online classes, we couldn't see our friends or even the teachers. I hadn't really realised the importance of school until February 2020. When the schools were closed, their horizon was limited to their bedroom wall, which changed their connection to time. When you're stuck at home, the days are all the same. Time moves slowly. At the time, it's slow, but when it's over, it seems that time flew past because it was all the same. Nothing new happened, nothing interesting, so now it all seems to have happened really quickly to me. In normal times, when you're 18, you go out to nightclubs, you meet loads of people, you might fall in love. And now it's been a year that I've been locked up at home, so I haven't met people, well, except through the internet, and that is obviously not the same thing. Social media was the lifesaver that this generation clung to. Julia has confided on Twitter. She kept an online diary, her lockdown diary, from day one. We didn't imagine for a second that it would be the last day of our school year. I came home from school and then the next day was my birthday. So I explain how afraid I was and I say that I didn't have a clue of what was going on outside. She turned 17 the day after lockdown was ordered. Instead of having a party, the teenager received a flood of friendly messages online. And since then, I've had a lot of success. I started talking about my daily life in the red zone. It's extraordinary what happened. I never imagined I'd get 14,000 followers. A door to the outside world, when the whole town was completely cut off. For over a year, the 139 residents of the local retirement home were banned from having family members visit. OK, let's go. We're going to see your darling daughter. Here we are. Your daughter will come through on the other side. This is the first time that Giancarla has seen her daughter for 13 months. Hello. I'm very emotional. I can believe that. In order to touch each other, mother and daughter have to use and tolerate this plastic barrier. You've got warm hands. 
Goodness, you're wearing two sets of gloves. Yes, yes, I've got gloves. It's because we have to do everything we can to keep you protected, to keep us protected, and that nothing gets contaminated. A high level of protection, justified by the highly viral nature of the disease that has already killed 30 residents. At last I can hug her, touch her. She seems in good spirits. She's as beautiful as ever at 89. She would like to come to our house. Who wouldn't want to? <laughs> For now, a dream that cannot be fulfilled until the whole population has been vaccinated. It's great, but it would be even better if we could be even closer. But this already makes me happy. I feel very content. So how did it go? Did it go well? Are you happy? Come and give me a hug, Mum. Goodbye, Mum. Goodbye. This disinfected chamber is a first step, a step towards a return to normality, a normality that everyone here is praying for. Louise Malnoy, Lorenzo Penza and Natalia Mendoza revisited Codogno for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. Of course, you can catch it and the previous editions as well on our website. You'll find it at france24.com. More news coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching.